What's going on guys? So we're out here at the North American International Auto Show, the Detroit Auto Show. And uh, yeah, I, I had to stop here and take a look at this Lincoln Navigator. And there's a very specific reason why I had to stop and take a look at this Lincoln Navigator. I'll give you guys a chance to figure it out. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so what's so special about this brand new 2023 Lincoln Navigator Black Series, or Black Label, I'm sorry. Uh, Black Label is their top of the line trim. Besides, in my opinion, the new Lincoln Navigator looking absolutely amazing. I think it's probably one of the most prestigious looking SUVs on the road. Uh, I actually like the look of this a lot more than I like the new Escalade. Um, I think that the lines on this just kind of draw you into it. It has a very, very kind of European slash American look, but the size of a full size of American SUV and the power. Um, what's really cool about it is they've constantly made little evolutionary changes to it over the last couple of years to keep it not only relevant, but even more modern. So they've upgraded the sync system in it, they've upgraded the lighting to it, made subtle little changes. But I would argue to say that even the previous body style, which is only, I guess, a year ago, it looks pretty much the same, but it's still probably one of the best looking SUVs on the road. So the reason why I'm showcasing this right now is because, again, I'm here at the NIAS show in Detroit, but also my wife is actually considering getting rid of her 2019 Ford Expedition Platinum and getting one of these. Um, ever since these came out, this was like her favorite vehicle. She absolutely loved it, but because these carry about a twenty to $30,000 premium over a comparably equipped Expedition. And when I say comparably equipped, you really can't compare that because like a platinum level Expedition like what my wife has was like $72,000. If you want to get a black label version of this, it's going to be like $110,000. If you want to go down to a uh, slightly lower trim, it's going to probably be between about ninety-five dollars and $105,000. So yeah, you're going to pay significantly more. Um, part of it's the name, part of it's the service that you get. I think most people who look at luxury vehicles realize that the service you get from a dealership is a big driving force into why you should get a certain brand. Same way with tractors, right? A lot of people said when you go out and buy a tractor, you go out and buy a lawnmower, you buy a zero turn or a excavator, dealer service, it should absolutely be factored in how much you pay because if you get a good experience out of it, then that's ultimately one of the reasons why you bought that brand. And Lincoln is definitely one of those brands that tries to give you that experience. Let's take a look at the inside of this thing real quick. So this is the black label. They have the uh, running boards. They're auto deploying, but they're turned off at the moment. They try to really uh, keep the batteries from draining out here. So they'll turn off features that aren't absolutely mandatory to show. The seats right here are insane. First of all, you have all your power controls right here. You have tons of massage modes that I don't have on my truck and my wife doesn't have on her current Expedition. Um, a lot more modes than, than the outgoing models. But yeah, this is very, very, very just, just soft touch, very luxurious, very well-built, high quality fit and finish. You have the real wood up here as well. Right here you have the new Sync 4 system in it. It's coming through. You can see all the wood grain treatments around this as well. I love this little pocket right here. This is one of the main reasons my wife absolutely loves this SUV is because of this pocket. She calls it her purse pocket. Basically a spot that you can put your purse and other things like that so it's not sitting on a center console or in the passenger seat. In the back you can see just absolutely gorgeous. They've done such an amazing job with the design. I love the look of the seats in these too because you can tell that there are just a ton of options in terms of conforming the seat so it's most comfortable for you. You have your sunroof up top here. Of course, it's a dual pane panoramic. A lot of driver safety features that you're going to get in one of these also. Let's take a look in the back. So they got one of the seats folded down. You have this one equipped with the theater package in it. Third row is folded flat. And this is not the extended version. So they have an extended version of this as well, which gives you about two feet extra length in the back there. Beautiful, beautiful vehicle. And one of the uh, subtle ways you can tell the difference between the 2022 and 2023 model 
is this light strip right here is straight and it runs across the top of the light assembly. So the outgoing model, it dipped down right here and then went back up and you didn't have this solid LED light strip that ran, ran across the top portion of your lights. Gorgeous vehicle. Has the blacked out wheels on it as well. And taking a closer look at the front, absolutely beautiful, beautiful Lincoln Navigator. I love the little glowing emblem there in the center as well. And then coming over to the Lincoln Aviator. So this is built off of like the Ford Explorer platform. But you really couldn't tell to be honest. I mean, if you put a new Explorer next to this, you would probably be able to see the similarities in terms of the overall design and shape. But this to me is one of the most standout SUVs I've ever seen. It, it kind of has characteristics of like a Jaguar mixed in with a Range Rover, mixed in with a new Ford Explorer. I love how they continue the uh, mono paint design all the way down to the bottom. Something you typically see on Explorers, and I believe it kind of gives it more of, I guess, a cheaper feel in some sense, is where they use kind of that texturized plastic trim down here on the bottom and the front and it just doesn't allow that cohesive paint to travel all the way through and give you that truly luxurious look. But I think that really is one of the reasons why this stands out so well. Coming around to the front. Absolutely beautiful. Big fan of Lincoln. You know, for a while, I thought the Lincoln brand was like going away. I thought it was dying. But ever since they introduced specifically the new Aviator and the new Navigator, that, that's changed completely you see a desire for people to actually own these vehicles now. Check out the interior. Is this not absolutely beautiful? If this wasn't a truck and RV channel, I would probably want one of these to drive around in. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And the towing capacities on these, as well as the Explorers, aren't that bad. I mean, you're pushing upwards of about 6,000 pounds. Um, in reality, I'd probably say more like a 4,500 pound trailer max. And then even then you'd have to be very careful. But could you see yourself owning something like this? I mean, I guess you have to be into this type of interior. You know, having something that has really elegant stitch pattern like this. Something that gives you this type of flexibility where you can actually adjust each leg of your seat. But this is just such a beautiful, beautiful SUV. Taking a look in the back. I love this kind of pearl coat paint. Beautiful tri-coat paint. Got your entertainment system as well. Just every aspect of this vehicle is absolutely beautiful. They've done such a great job. Panoramic sunroof up top as well. And I guess just to kind of wrap it up, this is a Corsair, Lincoln Corsair vehicle. It shares many of the same design cues as both the Aviator and the Navigator. This one's actually locked right now, so I can't show you inside of it, but it has a pretty nice interior as well. Very cool. And then finally, the one Lincoln SUV that I don't really care for in terms of overall looks. This is a Nautilus. It's got kind of a kind of a strange grill to it. The front end, this whole front end, it looks a little droopy to me. It just it doesn't have that same classiness that you see with the Aviator or the Navigator. And you know, it just seems like this right here is a better option if you're gonna get a vehicle, but this is probably a little larger. I think this is based off of like the, uh, the Ford Edge. All right, so let's look inside of this. It's got a really nice interior, but again, it just, it doesn't have that same feel. I'm not digging this like I'm digging the other ones, honestly. What do you guys think? Give me your opinions. What do you think of the Lincoln SUV lineup? So this is kind of cool. Check this out. It is a 2022 Aviator, but this is a plug-in Aviator. That's a really, really cool option for those of you who want a, a plug-in hybrid version of an Aviator. This is probably gonna have the same interior as the white one over there. A little bit different in terms of trim, a little bit different overall style to it. Still beautiful though. But yeah, what do you guys think? Especially, you know, the Navigator, because I, I told you all that my wife is absolutely considering getting a Navigator and trading in her Expedition. What would you all do? Do you think that that's a, a good vehicle to upgrade to? For her, 
it's all about smoothness. It's all about luxury and comfort. And, you know, she doesn't mind driving my truck or spending time in it, but she certainly doesn't think that it's the most comfortable ride whenever she's done. Um, and she wants to just have a really nice, luxurious vehicle. And if that's the vehicle she wants, that's the vehicle we'll get for her. But we'd love to know your opinion. What do you think about the new Navigator? Do you think we should take a look at the new Escalade? Should we look at the new Infiniti QX80? Perhaps um, the Toyota Sequoia? Or even the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which you guys saw that I reviewed. By the way, she loved that vehicle as well. So that's certainly one that she's considering also. But yeah, please leave a comment below. What are your thoughts? And I know some of the people that watch my channel just aren't big into luxury vehicles. They don't really care. They just want a work truck to be a work truck. And for those of you who are just like that and that's all you care about, leave a comment below as well. I'd love to know your opinion. Anyways, guys, we're going to be out here for several more days. If you uh, have some content you'd like us to shoot, please let us know. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.